Kubernetes secret. You always need Kubernetes secret for some or the other purpose whenever you are deploying your applications to Kubernetes. It's always interesting how to manage Kubernetes secrets and what are the tools which are available. In this video, we are going to discuss about one such tool called external secrets operator. So as it is very clear from the name, it is an operator that lives inside the Kubernetes cluster and your secrets can live outside the Kubernetes cluster. And it's the responsibility of the external secrets operator using the CRDs that will be creating the abstraction for you to fetch those secrets using the APIs from various external key management systems and get those secrets that you can mount back into your pods, whether you, are, whether you are using databases or any other thing that requires a secret to be used. Before starting, this video is brought to you by Commodore, Sysdig, Instruct, Slim AI. They sponsor my time and I'm able to bring you such topics. So without wasting any further time, let's dive into external secrets operator. So external secrets operator is a CNCF sandbox project. And it's basically an operator to synchronize secrets from external APIs into Kate. So what that means is whenever you write those custom resource definitions after deploying this operator onto your Kubernetes clusters, it will fetch those secrets from the APIs as specified obviously in the spec section, which we'll go through in the demo and then create a Kubernetes secret inside your cluster and always sync that back. And you can use that particular secret with your pods. So again, it helps to store and manage the life cycle of the secrets. On a very high level, it looks like this. So uh, you have a Kubernetes cluster that is obviously you have to have that. And then you'll install the external secrets operator on that. Now ex with external secrets operator, there are some custom resource that you can define. And two most important ones are the secret store. Now secret store is the custom resource that tells you how to access the external key management system, which in this case is Vault. But if you go through the documentation, there are numerous providers that can be used by this external secrets operator to get authenticated via the secret store and then moving on to the external secret. Now in this particular external secret, we define what we want to fetch from the secret store and what type of secret we want to create using the templating. So basically what it does is it fetches from the secret store in this particular case, again, vault. And then you can also define how your secret should look like using template. Now template is some of the advanced configurations that you can do with your external secrets. So we will be going through now a complete setup to demonstrate what we just discussed. Like first we have Kubernetes, then we have vault operator installed on that. Then we'll install the external secrets operator. We'll create the secret store. We'll create the external secret and we'll see that how external after the external secret creation, there is a secret which is created by fetching it from vault and then creating a secret and then the sync happening between them. There is one special thing that I'll also show in the end. I already have a Kubernetes cluster, uh, which is up and running. So kubectl get nodes will give you a three node cluster, which is there. And now moving on, what we'll do is first we'll install vault. So we'll create the namespace and we'll add the repository. I already have the repository added. And then we'll search for the versions. So it has a lot of version. We'll use the latest version 0.2.3.0. Put it here. All the commands, I'll put that into GitHub. Oh, it is installing vault. Once the vault is deployed, we'll edit its service. So kubectl get svc vault and we'll edit the internal one. We'll make this as node port. So basically it it's cluster IP none. So it will give you some error. So what you do is you just escape. It will save it as a temporary file and then you can delete the service and apply again. This is just to make things easier because we need to access vault. This particular video, we are not discussing about the proper vault setup. We just need a vault server to showcase how we can actually use external secret operator to fetch the data from vault store. Now let's see the node port, kubectl get 
as we say. So it is on 30484 and QCTL contract view. So this is the IP. Let's go. So our vault is up and running. Uh, now let's do the initial setup. So it'll ask for the key shares and key threshold. Again, this is not a vault video. So for just for uh, this particular demo, uh, you can put as three, five, whatever you need. So I'll put as three, I'll initialize that. It will give me some of the keys. I'll copy those keys and save it because I need it to unseal the next step in the next step. Now we continue to unseal it. Now we have to provide all the three keys one by one. So the first one, second one, and the third one. So we'll use the token method and here we have to use the token. Again, from the keys page, you should have downloaded that. And everything that I'm doing with the UI, you can always do with the CLI. So anyways, which way you are comfortable. Uh, so I want to show you things happening here. So it's more visual. Now what we'll do is we'll enable engine. We'll use simple key value and we we'll keep the default path, enable the engine. And we'll create a new secret. We'll create demo. And we'll give real. Yeah. And we'll save that. So that's where it is saved. Now let's install the external secrets operator. Again, we'll be using help to install that. And we'll be using the install CRD's true flag as well. So let's do that. Clear the screen. And we will remove the hash because we want to create it. Now the external secrets operator has been successfully deployed. We can actually check kubectl get thoughts. You can see that the external secrets, all the ports are, you know, started. And we have the CRDs as well. So you can see we have secret stores and external secrets, the ones that I talked about in the theory part of this video when we started. So now, as we mentioned that after Kubernetes cluster, we install the vault operator, we have vault running, we install external secrets operator, we have that running. Now it's time to create the secret store. So this is how the secret store looks like. Um, you have the kind secret store. The secret store name will be called as vault backend. The provider in this case is we are using vault with the server address of the one that we just hit with the node port service and the path we enabled the engine KV. So we are giving the same KV path. That's what we used. We are using V2 version for the authentication. We are using the token that we downloaded when the, all the tokens were there listed there and uh, the token will be as a secret, uh, but the secret have to be base 64 encoded. So we need to fix this. Encode it in the base64 format. You can simply do it like this. And use this slab in the token section. Now let's kubectl apply. Secret store. So the secret store and the secret has been created. We clear the screen. And now it's time to create the external secret. So this is how the external secret looks like. So we have kind as external secret. Now the external secret name that we have given is vault example. The refresh interval of the sync is 15 seconds. Every 15 seconds it will try to fetch if there is any update to the provider secret reference that we have given and up, it will update the secret. Now the secret store reference, we have to give the same name that we have given by creating that secret store. Then the target is the name example sync. Target means the target secret that it has to create will be called as example sync. In that example sync, what the data will be? So the secret key, so in the example sync, the secret key will be called foobar. The remote reference key path is KV demo. So we need to fix that. So let's do it. So it's KV demo. 
how we know that because if we go back we can see kv and the path is demo this is the path that we have created and in that the key is name so in that the property that we have to refer is name so let's save this and apply external secret it is created we'll do kubectl get secrets and we can see just now that example sync secret was created we can actually see that kubectl get secret example sync hyphen o yaml and you can see that in the data section you have four bar which was the key and the base 64 encoded so we'll decode this echo and you can see sayam that was what we actually gave the name as so this is how you can use external secret to actually get the secret and create it as a kubernetes secret and then you can mount this secret as a volume or as whatever directly use the secret inject it as an environment variable inside your pods whatever you want to do with this now let's create a new version of this so we will do the name as Arthak. you can see that i have changed it i will save it and in few seconds it should sync and you can already see that it has changed now let's decode that and it's part of so that's how quick the sync is that's how easy if anything you you want to rotate the secrets at any time so you can easily do that using your key management store and your kubernetes secrets will be auto updated now let's see our setup first so we had kids, vault operator, external secrets operator. We created a secret store connecting it to vault. And then we created external secret that was able to create a Kubernetes secret. We also updated that secret to another revision. And then our secret was also updated. So we have actually successfully completed this entire setup. Now let's go back to the documentation to see what extra things it has. So you have API, then you have a lot of guides which are there. Now is the provider section. So in the provider, you will be able to see all the providers that are supported. You can see has she got Vault over here, Google Secret and all these things. And when you click any of those, it will give you a sample of creation of secrets and all that stuff. Now, one of the interesting things that I want to point out is push secret, which is not too old. It is fairly kind of new. So push secret is something that you can create a Kubernetes secret and you can push that secret to the key management store. So I think this also enables the scenarios where you can or want to create Kubernetes secrets manually and then also push them to the key management stores. So let's see how to do that. I have created a secret. So this is a simple Kubernetes secret called my secret and in the default namespace. Now in the source key, it has to be kind of a JSON where we put pushed and uh, I'm giving it Sayyam. So it will be giving a secret as pushed with the value of Sayyam. And for the custom resource, we'll be creating a push secret with the name of push secret example with the same namespace as of the secret store, refresh interval and secret store reference, we'll giving the secret store that we created, which is the vault backend, because we want this particular secret to be pushed to that vault backend. And in the selector, we say the secret will be named as my secret, and that is the one that is here. So it will be selecting my secret from default namespace. And in the data, we have secret key as the source key, which is matching the secret key string data source key. And then in the remote reference, it is saying remote key as pushed. So let's do that. kubectl apply hyphen f push. When we go back, we should be able to see pushed and we should be able to see pushed as sayum as because that is what we said pushed sayum. So it has actually pushed this particular secret as well. So you can not only pull the secrets from the key management systems, you can also push the Kubernetes secrets to the key management systems. And I think this is a fantastic mechanism for managing your Kubernetes secrets 
with external management system, whether you want to pull it, whether you want to push it. So that's pretty much it for this particular video. I hope you got a gist of how you can create the secrets. Actually, the traditional way is pretty simple, like kubectl create secret, and then you can, you know, give generic TLS and create those secrets. Uh, but as as external key management stores that already exist in one of your cloud providers or one of the most popular ones that we just used now called Vault. So you can have all your secrets over there and you can use whatever you want as a Kubernetes secret to use that or mount that inside a Kubernetes object, for example, a pod or a stateful set so that you can run your applications. You can easily do that by using external secrets operator, connecting your vault using the secret store and then providing external secret that will again use the configuration that you defined in that external secret and create a Kubernetes secret which you can use. Also, you can create a Kubernetes secret and push that back to the external secrets operator that will again be pushing back to your key management system which you have defined as a secret store, like whatever is connected as a secret store to that external operator. So that's a gist of the external operator. This is a CNCF project. So that's why this video, I'll call it as a CNCF minutes video. And this is the next in the CNCF minute series. I keep on creating such content. So make sure you press the bell icon, like the video and share it with your friends. And if you are interested in sponsoring this particular channel, then do reach out. Thank you so much for watching in. And yeah, before leaving, make sure to check out Commodore Sysdic Instruct Slim AI, who always supports my stuff so that I can give you these type of content. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.